it's fishing time. Out early in the morning, gonna go out and cast away all these waters here for the big boys. And we all come out to play. It's a Northwestern way. Northwest Fishing Reports. Good morning, everyone. Mike Carey with Northwest Fishing Reports. We're here today fishing Pishkin Reservoir in central Montana. I'm with my son, Matthew. This reservoir is pretty cool. It's around 1,100 acres. It's got kokanee in it. It's got trout. It's got some trophy pike in it as well. So in the next coming days, we're gonna show you a little bit about the reservoir. And with any luck, we'll uh, get into some of those big fish. Let's go fishing. got our lines out. We are running a downrigger around 35 feet with kokanee gear. I've got a leaded line with two colors out. Again, kokanee gear. And then we've got two planer boards running. One's got an old goat and the other one has just a standard old uh, spoon. So those ones are running off of one ounce of lead and two ounces of lead. Just waiting for the fish. Take them. You're gonna have to reel down tight. Oh yeah, definitely. Tight. Is he on? Yeah. It's like a coconut. Nice fish. Oh, he's jumping around pretty good. Oh, he jumped off. Ah, uh, he jumped off. That's a bad. That's bad. Let's see. That was on an old goat. We're marking fish down there and uh, dealing with a little bit of breeze this morning. Hopefully this breeze will die off in a bit. But uh, we lost one already to start the day, but I'm optimistic. I'm marking fish periodically, no big clusters, but uh, threes and fours and singles, so I keep at it. Oh yeah, it's Okay, huh? Hey. Wow, we found the ticket. Today they are going after old goats. Got the, the orange one and on the other one is the pink. Got some uh, colored hooks and a couple pieces of corn. Did the trick. There you go. This is about a 13 incher, I'd say. Fish on. Nice fish. Got a nice fish here on the leaded line. Started seeing some marks down in the 40 foot range for those kokanee, but this is probably a trout, I'm gonna guess. Okay, there's a nice looking fish coming in. Uh, yeah, let's do it behind the down. Here. That's a nice trout. All right, huh? Nice little fish. All right. Look at that fish. 
put up a great fight, caught this on the leaded line using a little sling blade and a just a generic wedding ring that I made up. Get some more. Fish. Okay. Oh, that's a nice coconut. Yeah. That's a nice coconut. Oh. Hey Max, you got a nice coconut there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually measured it and came in at 15 inches. 15. That was caught on a Dutch fork custom lure blade with an art controlling fox fly and a chunk of the corn. Check out this beauty Matt just caught. This is an old goat. This is the new style double spinners old goat lure. Isn't that a beautiful rainbow? We're measuring it at 21 inches. We took this uh, three ounces on a planer board. Got a little sling blade, got that old goat. That is one beautiful fish. Got the planer board. Yeah. Unless the fish swam into it. That was, that was a bite. Okay, we'll keep it rolling. Yeah. One of the perils this, of having planer boards. I mean, this on. isn't really moving that much. Yeah, there's a fish. Yeah. Oh, he fell off. Oh, did he? Fell off. I think that was a kokanee, too. Just a little fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, you want the net? <laughs> pull him in. Ah, pull him in. Hey, look at that guy, huh? Crashing around a little bit. Alright, huh? Is that your first pike, That Matt? is my first pike. Well, that's pretty cool. Put up a cool little fight. Fun fish. It's like about 18 inches. We would normally throw him back. <laughs> you can have five pike in Pishkin Reservoir per day, so. Congratulations, Matt, your first pike. Fun little fish. Yeah, good deal. All right, I think this is a pretty good sized pike, huh? Oh, he is. He's tired. <laughs> he is tired. He's tired. Maybe it's the uh, reel is wrapped around. Maybe he's wrapped around a bunch of stuff. Is why it was heavy. And that's why it was heavy. Three pounds of seaweed. I don't even think he was hooked. Well, maybe he was hooked. I don't know. Hey. Take another pike, I guess. Northwest Fishing Reports. All right. It's tips and trips. New techniques and locations to expand your fishing horizons. Today I was fishing for steelhead with Josh Warren of WorkSharp. And he pulled out some of these cool new toys every angler needs. The new WorkSharp lineup. That's right. Let's take a look. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's get into it. Show me what you got. Yeah, so for starters, real quick, we've got our pocket sharpener here. Everything we do is going to have some sort of an angle guide. Okay. And then a, a premium abrasive. So this has got your diamond abrasive and a 20 degree angle guide. Got it and a ceramic abrasive. If you're on the boat, that ceramic's gonna keep you sharp and that diamond is gonna repair anything that, uh, okay. that might be damaged. Most of the time, the ceramic's all you need to keep that fillet knife in tip-top shape. You'll rest it on the guide and slide it across one side after another. A Couple passes and you'll be razor sharp again after going through some bones, on to the next fish. 
the damage you're talking burrs stings yeah if you've got any any chips in there uh, anything that's visible on the blade you can see this one's in pretty good shape but but same process where you're going to rest it on that angle guy mm -hmm. and drag it across on a longer knife like this you might have to work in two passes gotcha so this is our pocket knife sharpener we've got the big brother the guided field sharpener these are really similar and they've both been out for just a couple of years now. So this sure. is a little bigger and badder, uh, a couple more abrasive options. Okay. So you've got the fine diamond, I guess a coarse diamond to start with. Sure. A fine diamond, a coarse and fine ceramic rod. There's also okay. a fish hook groove in there. So oh, if yeah. you're sharpening your fish hooks, unless you're like me and you lose your fish hooks. <laughs> right. But if you sharpen Take a look at them, that. So you can actually, Yep, you slide it in there and you'll just rub back and forth in that groove and puts a nice point back on there. So sure. a lot of a lot of uh, ocean fishing, maybe halibut, you sure. really need those sharp hooks, the really right. big ones. You're not losing them all that often, so right. you gotta, you're touching them up. A must have for the tackle box too. They're Definitely, they fit great. Size. They fit great in tackle box, a glove box. You're gonna keep every knife sharp. Sure. So these guys are new. These are part of our pivot lineup. So mm -hmm. a couple of cool pieces of technology that we're introducing at a really uh, reasonable price point mm -hmm. so that you can have one of these everywhere and you'll never have a dull knife. Right. So the carbide that we use here is a convex shape. And the benefit of that is that it allows, so the tip of the knife is it starts out as a V right. and a convex carbide is only going to affect the very tip of that knife. So and you're so only sharpening that Only the very edge. tip, yeah. removing minimal material. Got it. So the other piece that we brought to this is, is how they get their name, and that's the pivot. So there's a little switch on the top of that. And what that does is allows you to either free or lock those carbides. And so they can rotate or they stay stationary. When they rotate, as you drag the knife through, you're actually sharpening the knife on that 90 degree edge of the carbide. Got it. And so you're able to remove material faster if you're starting with a very dull knife. Sure. So you get, get sharp faster. Then you lock out that, that carbide mm -hmm. and you're able to kind of hone it, flip over, and then we have our ceramic. When you're on the go, the ceramic is probably all you need to be yep. touching up. So these other two are, are just slightly more advanced versions in different uh, different forms for various convenience. Of the same technology, right? Same technology. So in awesome new lineup, the Pivot series, this is the Pivot, the Pivot Plus, and the Pivot Pro. Uh, these are all new for the, the fall season of 2019. So just in time to, to get out maybe into the field for the sportsmen or uh, the, the spring fishing season. Right. Hey, this was a real pleasure to see in action today on the boat. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure fishing with you. Yeah, likewise. Had a great time. Some yeah. beautiful fish out there. Oh gosh, it was great down here. Uh, everybody, that was Josh Warren with WorkSharp. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome to our cast and blast adventure here in Montana. I'm with my son Matt and his dog Murphy. We've been fishing earlier in the season at Peshkin Reservoir for trout, kokanee, and pike. And now we're doing the blast part of the adventure, hitting some of the fields and public lands out here in Montana. We're around Fairfield. The hunting has been great. Join us as we go casting and blasting. End of the fence. It's gonna flush straight ahead of you. Now it's gonna probably flush to your left. Ah. 
That's a nice bird. Get on there, bring it. Bring it. Wow. Pretty big. Yeah. Check his spur. That's the thing you want to look for, the spur and the tail feather. That's a nice one. I missed more than my share, so that felt good. Montana pheasants. You just saw Murphy freeze on two roosters and the hunter forgot to take the safety off. So that's on me, that's not on Murphy. What a day out here on Montana's grasslands and farmlands for pheasant. Pretty awesome stuff. Here, bud. Matt, last night we got a lot of rain. How's that gonna affect the pheasant hunting today? Expect the birds to hold their cover a lot more so than yesterday. It's uh, not as windy as it was yesterday, so they're not going to be as apt to fly. They're going to kind of want to hunker down, conserve their energy. Thankfully, we still have my dog, and as you saw from yesterday, he's a pointer. So those birds that are sitting in the brush are going to be found, and we're going to have a good time hunting those up. Sharp-tailed grouse, about 30 yards away. Oh, he's on a point. Good Murphy. Good boy. That was a rooster. That was a rooster that Murphy got in this swampy area, but the bird never got up high enough and I didn't want to take a shot risking Murphy. So sometimes you gotta let him go. These cattails are another good spot. We've been getting a lot of roosters in here too. Running, birds running. Oh, He'll chase it down. Wow, that was crazy. Had and then got that rooster. Murphy had to chase it down. This is a big rooster. We'll measure it later, but look at that. That's a big long tail. And look at the spur on the back. Oh my god. Montana pheasant hunting doesn't get any better than this, I'll tell you. Let's go get some more. We talked a little bit earlier about how, how to identify if you have a trophy worthy bird, the age of the bird and those kinds of things. Let's take a look at that right now. So we've got a couple of indicators. If you look at these birds here, this one, you can see the feathering is rather immature. There's some sharp, jagged edges. That tells me that this rooster's not very old. Compared to this rooster here, if you see he's got a lot fuller feathers, the tips are rounded off. That's a good indicator that this bird's been around for a few seasons. Another thing pheasant hunters like to look at is the length of the bird's spur, as well as the length of the tail feather. And that's a good indicator, again, whether the bird you shot might be worthy of mounting uh, or just one to tell your buddies about. Here's the really nice one we shot today. You can take a look here on the bird's feet. They have these three toes. 
and they have this spur here in the back. Now you can see, this is a really nice size spur. If I had to guess, I would say somewhere close to maybe a third of an inch. That's a really nice size spur. Okay, so the last thing to look at is the length of the tail feather. This is the thing that really catches our eye as we see that bird flying. It's what gets us excited after we flush that bird and we take that shot. The tail feather, pretty self-explanatory, obviously the back of the bird here. We generally measure from the base of the bird to the furthest tip, and it's quite all right to extend out that feather and try to get every quarter of an inch you can. Generally, birds I've shot have tail feathers somewhere in the low to mid 20s. If you get a bird kind of in that high teens uh, tail feather length, again, that means you probably have a pretty juvenile bird. Far, the biggest tail feather I've ever shot, uh, 27 and three eighths of an inch. That was a really impressive one. I told my wife, we're gonna mount this bird, and she said, no, you're not. So I'm gonna use my measuring tape here, and we'll see just how big of tail this uh, rooster has. My tape measure is a little bit out of whack, so I'm gonna start at the 40 uh, inch mark here, start at the base of the tail, and go ahead and grab that tail and lengthen it out. Looks like it comes up to about the 21 inch mark, we'll say, maybe 20 and a half. So this rooster's got a tail, maybe about 20, 20 and a half inches. So not super impressive uh, in terms of size, but interesting when you compare the size of that spur. So out here in the field, you might have birds with these really impressive tail feathers, but small spurs, maybe some are girthier than others, small tail feathers. It's just kind of an interesting mix, what you can find out here. Thanks, Matt. The last couple of days we've been on private land and today we're hunting on public land. Definite difference between public and private land in terms of number of birds, but regardless, it's just great to be out here. Montana is an amazing place to go hunting.